There is no present moment to distinguish past from future. All times coexist. Time just is. And so the future is already out there. The only way to understand this was to link the three dimensions of space with the one dimension of time to make what became known as four-dimensional space-time. Space-time is certainly different stuff from space because it's four-dimensional as opposed to three-dimensional, which is a big difference. Um, so it's just that time really has to be brought into the picture. It's, it's one thing, which is space-time. Let's imagine what this might be like. Three-dimensional space implies a volume, and you can move anywhere in that volume. Once you add time as the fourth dimension, another axis, then this block of space-time would contain within it past, present, and future, all at once. Time is frozen. All times exist together. So just as you could say, over here, over there, in three-dimensional space. You can, you can talk about over then, in, in, in four-dimensional space-time. It's a way of looking at things, if you like, which, which physically we seem to be forced into. That is, when I phys say physically, I say from the point of view of what relativity tells us. And relativity is extremely well tested, something like 14 places of decimal, I and mean, it's incredible. So that we know that this theory does describe the universe to an extraordinarily precise degree. So we have to take it seriously. And that theory tells us that we have to regard space and time as part of as one thing. It's all out there as one thing. In the same sense that space is out there, time is out there. Like the medieval god's view of time, Einstein's physics says the future is already out there. moments of our lives just waiting for us to step into them. But there's no, no more problem about the future being out there in a sense as there is uh, with the sp space being out there. I mean you say yeah, yeah, Mars is out there you see <laughs> and uh, why is that any more um, comprehensible than say next week is out there. I mean it's, it's just as far away in a certain sense, well, in a certain sense. Um, Mars is still out there but it's not something we're immediately accessible, we can't immediately access Mars. If you take this block four-dimensional space-time literally, it means you have to abandon free will. It means not only is the future preordained, but it's already there. It's already happened. There's no point making any decisions. Whatever you do has already happened. If I choose to drop a stone into a pond, I think of it as being my free choice. But of course, in four-dimensional space-time, I had no choice in dropping the stone, the splash that is already there in the future, and so we lose all free will. If time travel were possible, then you can imagine people coming back from the future to visit us. There's no good us saying, you can't exist, you haven't happened yet. They've come from a time that they consider as their now, and for them, we are in their past. So this means that, that the future and the past are all, in a sense, out there. And that also gives us a very deterministic view of the world. We have no control, if you like, of what happens in the future because it's laid out. I think that the trouble people have with this idea is that you think of the future as being under your control to some degree. And so this means that uh, if, if, if the future is laid out, then in a sense it's not under your control. Personally, I'm very uncomfortable about the block universe idea. Uh, now this may just be a gut feeling, maybe irrational, but I can't accept that the future is already out there. I can't accept that I don't have any free will.
I think there is a positive side to this picture of space and time being laid out there as four dimensions. Because in a sense it tells you that all times are there at once and it can affect how one thinks about people who, who have, have died. I mean, I remember thinking in this kind of way when my mother died. In some sense, she was still there because her existence is still out there in space-time. Even though, in the normal way of thinking, at, at our time, she's not alive. A colleague of mine, his, uh, one of his sons, died in tragic circumstances, and he, he was a relativist, so he is a relativist. I mean, that's to say, he, someone who, who um, has worked in Einstein's general theory of relativity. And so I presented this view of things to him, and he found this reassuring. This was before I learned that Einstein had also taken the same line. When his colleague Besso died, Einstein wrote to Besso's wife, and in this rather reassuring way, to say that Besso was still out there in a sense, because space-time was laid out, and so it's somehow reassuring. I certainly think this way often. I think of somehow space-time is laid out and therefore things in the past and things in the future are in a sense out there still. But almost at the same time as relativity started gaining universal acceptance, a radically different picture of the universe was emerging. The way out, if you don't want to accept the block universe idea, is quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics is the other great theory of 20th century physics, and that states that the future isn't predetermined and preordained. Quantum mechanics was born out of a series of experiments whose results, even today, have no satisfactory explanation. Relativity works at the large scale, where it provides exact predictions of what will happen next. But when physicists started looking down to the atomic and subatomic level, the familiar laws failed. At this level, there were no certainties, only probabilities. How can the future of the entire universe be already out there if the future of a single particle is so utterly unpredictable? Before we look to check to see what the atom is doing, not only is there a gap in our knowledge, not only do we not know what it's doing, the atom itself hasn't decided what to do. If it had a, an infinite number of choices to make, it will be doing all those choices at once. And it's only when we look to see what's happening that we force it to make a choice. Quantum mechanics, the future is not determined. And so quantum mechanics, in a sense, rescues us and rescues free will. In a sense, you don't have the future laid out in quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics is basically different in the way we look at it. You do have, at least when the measurement takes place, you do have this indeterminacy about the future. And it's, in a certain sense, I suppose, the incompatibility with a picture of special relativity is, is a necessary feature of this, the fact that there is this indeterminacy and having, in a sense, incompatibility with relativity. The notion of free will is incompatible with relativity, as we understand relativity. It's not incompatible with quantum mechanics. In a sense, quantum mechanics, as we understand it, allows for this indeterminacy in the future, whereas with relativity, there is a basic incompatibility. So I think that the way we understand these two theories at the moment, there is a difference in relation to how one views whatever free will is. Relativity is sort of inconsistent with it. Quantum mechanics is not. So we have these two great theories, both of which are extremely accurate, tell us something about the way the world operates, something very insightful and profound and accurate about the way the world operates, but they're incompatible with each other. So 